I have just been on such a Katrina ag kick lately, but what are you gonna do? She's the best. We have a square here. This is one of her problems. And we know that this square has been split up into five rectangles, each of which has equal area. They're not necessarily congruent rectangles, but they all have the same area. We're supposed to figure out the area of the overall square. So let's start by labeling some of these unknown lengths. We can call this one A going up and down from that length we already know of two. We can call that B and then finishing out our left to right length, we can call that C. So one thing we can do right away is state an equality. Two plus B is equal to A plus C. And that's interesting, we might come back to that later, but honestly, that equality is not as interesting to me as the equality between all the areas of these rectangles. So let's compute that area. We do actually know the dimensions completely of one of those five rectangles. This rectangle in the upper left-hand corner is a two by A rectangle. And so its area must be length times width, two times A equals 2a. Once we know that one, we can label all of these areas as 2a. And so we've got five different rectangles, all with that area 2a. Now let's stick with the whole length times width equals area thing for rectangles for just a second. If we're looking at this purple rectangle, which has a length of b, its width here must be the same thing as the total area divided by that length of b. So in fact, we can go ahead and label this as 2a, that's the area of the purple rectangle, divided by b divided by the length. I wanna to try to use this move again to figure out this kind of unknown middle set of rectangles. Because you'll notice those two rectangles are congruent. They have the same width, whatever it is, we don't know right now, and they have the same area, so they must have the same lengths. Meaning those lengths must have split that total length of B in half. So each one of these we can call B over two. Once again, using our relationship, width equals area divided by length, we can take a total area of 2A and divide by that length of B over two. And you probably remember that when we are dividing by fractions, functionally, that's the same thing as multiplying by their reciprocals. And so in fact, that width must be the product of 2a and 2 over b, which is going to give us back 4a over b. Once we know this, we want to look back up at the top of this square. That total length is a, and so this gives us a relationship. a must be equal to the sum of 2a over b and 4a over b. And although we don't know what b is, it's already the same across these two fractions. It's already a common denominator for us. And so we can say that a must be the sum here, 2a plus 4a makes 6a over b. There are a couple different manipulations we could use now, but the basic idea is we're going to realize, oh, the only way for this to work, a times b equals 6a, or a equals 6a over b, is if b itself is equal to six. And so there we go. We know that this length here must be six. And actually, as far as the area of the square is concerned, we're done now. Six plus two is eight. It's a square, so it's gotta be eight by eight. And therefore its area is eight times eight makes 64. Now, sometimes on these problems, I get a little cheeky and I say, oh, I'm gonna leave it as an exercise to the viewer to figure other stuff out, like what is A here and what is C here? And I could do that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and solve for A and C anyway. We can say, of course, two plus B, that is two plus six equals eight. And so we know that the sum A and C is eight. Unsurprisingly, let's go to the same length times width equals area relationship to use that piece of information. The area of this pink rectangle off to the right, which of course from the very beginning we've called 2A, also has to be the same thing as length times width, C times eight equals equals 8c. So this gives us a relationship between a and c. Specifically, if we divide by 2, divide by 2, we can say that a is equal to 4c. So we can come back up to our relationship here, 8 equals a plus c, and we can actually replace a with the 4c that we know it's equal to. Meaning 8 must actually be the same thing as 4c plus c makes 5c. From here, of course, divide by five, divide by five, 
we can figure out that C is equal to 1.6. And recall the way we got here is we knew that A was equal to 4C. So in fact, of course, A must be the same thing as 4 times 1.6 equals 6.4. And then just to double check our work, is it true that 6.4 plus 1.6 is 8? Yes. And so we have not only confirmed that our square is an 8 by 8 square with an area of 64, we have also solved for A and C. Now the part I guess I will leave up to the viewer is what does that mean the original five rectangles areas were individually? Not a terribly hard calculation, but comment down below. Or if you prefer, comment down below with a better way to solve for this. What's the better way to figure out the area of this square? This is, again, a Katrina Ag problem. She is the best. She is amazing. I'll try and find a link to her original problem and throw it down in the description, but otherwise I'll see y'all next time.